Hi, this is David Alec Knight, and I'd like to introduce my book of poems, Leper Mosh. It's being published by Cajun Mutt Press. It's being released on September 20th. And to start things off, I'm going to read a prose poem I wrote that's in the book. It's uh, called Growing With Metal. At first, I was oblivious to the new wave of British heavy metal. Heavy metal was everywhere back then, but I hadn't heard the term until well into the 80s, around the time Metallica released Garage Days Revisited. But in the earlier 80s, I was listening anyway to bands like Tyson Dog, Sweet Savage, Girl School, and some Venom now and then, though many bands had my ears. I listened to a lot of Hawkwind, though not part of the movement, having been around since the 70s, they received some collateral attention. Lemmy Kilminster, a then popular Motorhead, had been their bassist, and I was equally into Hawkwind's words and music too. Michael Moorcock, author of the series of books about Elric and Coram and of Jerry Cornelius, co-wrote songs with Hawkwind. I found bands and compilations would get into their music, but never had the impression it was sold as part of any specific movement. It could have been that I wasn't into fanzines at the time that were selling it. It could have been that the distribution of such fanzines just never got as far as me. Two. In high school, one kid wore Venom shirts and another wore Saxon shirts, but otherwise most heavy metal kids were near the established metal of the day. Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Motorhead, and Scorpion shirts were common wear. And then, of course, as years wore on, Metallica would take greater hold. I learned of Judas Priest from late night music video shows, at different times seeing videos for Breaking the Law, Living After Midnight, and Don't Go. I saw the video for Don't Go during the same video show I also saw People Are People by Depeche Mode, He Knows You Know by Marillion. The late night video shows played them as they got them, no genre segregation then. As the 80s wore on, even the eventual after school music video shows fairly played the videos as they came in too. In the same program, you might then see a Judas Priest video, a Samantha Fox, Sting, Run DMC, Queensryche, or Marillion video with Corey Hart or Brian Adams mixed in. Uh, these were Canadian channels, understand. Three. I remember I had seen an Italian horror film on TV, pan and scan and English dubbed, but I recognized the song by Saxon in the end credits. I didn't know an Argento from a Baba, a Fulci, or a Lenzi film at that time. Knowledge of Italian horror and giallo would come to me only much later. After that weekend, I figured having seen the band listed in the end credits, I would find that kid who was always wearing the Saxon shirts and use that as a start to a conversation. I never thought back then I could just talk. I felt back then I should have something to say to people, otherwise I didn't see the point of saying hey in the first place. We were in shop class when I said hey, and I had heard the band in a movie I saw that weekend. He was like, okay, whatever, what's your point? I just weakly said I thought that was cool, was all. The kid wearing the Venom shirt looked over like he was laughing without laughing, but that could have been me projecting. 4. The heavy metal kids that accepted me most were the Iron Maiden and Judas Priest fans. In our class, I sat with a bunch of Judas Priest fans and a Rush fan. The Priest and Maiden fans tended to have equal interests in horror films, which was an in for me to relate to other people, as I was always watching horror movies. It was the beginning of me being less of a social cripple, actually competently interacting with others. Being a longtime comic fan was also useful, as a lot of us tended to do art projects influenced by rock album art and comics. Neil Adams was popular for album art of Thin Lizzy and also for movies like Grizzly. His influence was still strong well into the late 80s, and would then compete with Pusheyed by way of Metallica, Away's artwork for his band Voivod, and 2000 AD Judge Dredd styles by way of Anthrax. I had been reading 2000 AD as early as 79, so when Anthrax did I Am the Law, inspired by Judge Dredd's future world of the comics, I was much impressed. And I felt I was part of something that was catching up to me, as much as I was someone catching up to it. And five. I started listening to Metallica with the Creeping Death EP, then got Ride the Lightning when they released Master Puppets. 
It felt like it was only just getting into the music when I heard bassist Cliff Burton had died in a bus accident while on tour. The hell? The hell? When my parents were out, I played The Call of Cthulhu and Orion on my dad's stereo, a great setup that could play extremely loud and with much clarity. I didn't play Fade to Black, their mournful and lyrical power ballad, or as close to a power ballad as a thrash band could get. It often played at teen funerals. I didn't want to hear any words. Those two instrumentals, aggressive, ethereal, heavy, and melodic as they ever were, fell on my ears differently. The music wasn't just music anymore. It was part catharsis. I was growing with music. Music was growing with me. I was attaching people's feelings to the music they made, and by so doing, recognizing my feelings for that music. Now that was Growing With Metal. That's from my new book. This is my second book ever of poems. It's my first one published with Cajun My Press, and it's going to be released September 20th. So as I say, put that on your calendar and check it out if you would. Thank you again.